The core argument rests on what happens mechanically when the number of predictors, P, vastly exceeds the training window observations, T. In that specific setup, the RFF-based forecast, because of how this ridgeless regression works, essentially just, well, it reduces to a simple weighted average of the T training sample returns. A weighted average of past returns. Yes. And the crucial part here is that the weights aren't learned from some deep market insight. They fundamentally depend on the similarity between the predictor vectors in the training data and the current predictor vector you're using to make the forecast. So it's not truly learning a complex new relationship between, say, inflation and future stock returns from scratch. It's more like if the economic conditions today look very similar to last month's conditions then it mechanically assumes the market will behave similarly to how it did last month. And if we connect this to the bigger picture, especially with these very short training windows like T equal 12 months, and given that the underlying predictors, like those Goyle-Welch variables, are quite persistent, they don't jump around wildly month to month, then similarity primarily reflects temporal proximity, meaning recent predictor observations, say from the previous month, are just naturally the most similar to the current month's observation vector. Which means the forecast effectively becomes a recency-weighted average of the T-return observations in the training data. So for you, the listener, this translates into something you might recognize. It's essentially a momentum strategy. Pretty much. It's putting higher weights on the most recent past returns, implicitly betting that what happened recently will continue. Okay, so it's sort of stumbling into momentum. Is that the whole story? Well, there's another layer. The strategy also subtly embeds a form of volatility timing. 